You're listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me, your naturally platinum blonde pop culture connoisseur. I'm the reality TV junkie, self-improvement addict, and host with only the hottest tea spilled fresh all week long. Those balls have gotten you in trouble, though. Oh, you yeah. They picked us because we're horny. Yeah. Right. And that's your chronic state. That's what you've always said. <laughs> My life has changed so much that it's almost like a completely different life. From the latest news on The Real Housewives. I'm so happy to be here and engage with you. Deep dives into celebrity legal scandals and unfiltered convos with your favorite stars. I've got you covered. And yes, I always keep receipts. All right, welcome on in, guys. Today's guest, you may recognize him from Instagram with his very hunky cooking videos. Maybe you caught him at last year's BravoCon, mixing things up with Amy Phillips. He's got a book out. It's called Cook It, Spill It, Throw It, the Not-So-Real Housewives parody cookbook, unauthorized, that he co-authored with Amy Phillips. Please welcome from Jeff Lewis Live. He's always getting blasted every morning on Jeff Lewis Live. Please (laughs) welcome Chef Stuart O'Keefe. Woo! Thanks for having me. How you doing? How are you? I'm great. Good. People have been waiting for you to come on the podcast, and we finally made it happen. I know. I know. I was just like, you'd ask me after BravoCon. I was like, hey, let's hold off for a bit. Like, <laughs> like the bit became like months and months. And I was like, no, let's do it. Let's get on. So I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad you're here too. Do you enjoy doing Jeff Lewis Live so often? Since um, you get dragged on it very often. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just like to go in there with just like low self-esteem and then you'll be fine, Love you it. know, uh, but it's fun. It's super fun. The poking fun is fine. Sometimes it gets a bit heavy, but it's, it's him. You know what I mean? It's what I signed up for. Yeah. So it's good. It's, it's all out of love. That's what I keep telling myself. Yeah. It's all, that's what I tell people. Yeah. When I drag them like it's out of love. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, like if I have so a I have house- to tell myself that. Yeah, if I have to drag a housewife, I'm like, but it's done with love and appreciation yeah, and yeah. adoration. I don't hate you. Yeah, exactly. If I hated you, I wouldn't talk about you. That's it. That's it. That's when you know you're in fucking trouble. Yeah. Are you ready for BravoCon this year? I am. I hope like they have a slot for me and Amy to do another cooking demo. It was so fun last year and yeah. You know, I was like, Amy, hit them up again, like early stages, because we didn't get confirmed last year until about like July. So it's very early to go back to us. We're like, hey, we're just still putting the slate together. We yeah. don't know what's what, like who's doing the panels, what shows we have or anything like that. So they're just kind of piecing it together. So fingers crossed on that one. Yeah, usually with like these big events, like the programming doesn't really get nailed out until closer to the events anyway. Um, but I'm like, bravo, put me on stage. I'm doing a panel. I know. Time. Yeah, exactly. And it's like the thing about it is, and I was even saying this to Jeff, I was like, you should do BravoCon. Like, it'd be amazing if you did a panel or something like yeah. that. And he's like, yeah, you know what? That could be a lot of fun. And the thing about it is, it's like, I remember last year, I was like to Amy, I was like, why are we not doing BravoCon? Like we wrote the Housewives cookbook. We're the only two people that wrote it. Like this is fresh. It's new. It hasn't been done. And, and we like pitched them the idea and they're like, oh my God, we didn't even think about that. Like, so it's like, pitch them ideas yeah. they want to hear they should do like a radio row like have radio andy because like so yes. many conferences so many cons now do that um i mean get some of the big podcasts on there get all of yeah. radio andy on there and like do or have some of the panels be live podcast tapings live tapings of jeff lewis like people would sign up for that and it's different from what they've already done in the past exactly is that like radio andy like hands down just should be doing it there should have a boot there yeah. all these guests and stuff it's just i don't know do a special on a saturday or something that airs on sunday i don't know like yeah. whatever i think that's yeah. a great idea that's so, it. so um, bravo if you're listening take you- notes right now <laughs> yeah, exactly hit me up my email address is my email uh, is. my booking contact is um <laughs> So how has the reception been from the book? I love the book. The recipes are hilarious. They have fun, cheeky names. You guys look like you had a blast doing the photo shoot for it. What made you want, Um, what actually made you want to do a Housewives parody cookbook? Are you a big Housewives fan? Like that much? Yeah, I am. I am a big Housewives fan. I don't watch them all because there's just so many of them. And like, like literally what happened, I was due to do a second book. My first cookbook was Quick Six Fix. So I was like, just trying to find another idea and I pitched them other ideas and they were like, uh, yeah, it's not great. It's great. Not great. And so I went to HarperCollins in New York, sat down with them, pitched that book. They're like, yeah, no. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, well, I kind of have this other idea for like, like a housewives cookbook. And they're like, oh, well tell us about it. It was literally like a four or five minute pitch. 
And they're like, we want to hear more about that. I had nothing written up. It was just, that's how it happened. Because I was remember, I was sat in, on the couch here with my friend, Chris, and we were watching at Beverly Hills or something like that. And they were eating out and stuff. And I was like, why has no one done a Housewives cookbook? Like basically off all the franchises and just like poke fun of them, do fun recipes. I like that are real recipes because I'm the chef, but I need something to do it with. Yeah. So then I took it to Amy Phillips and she was like, oh my God, like sign me up straight away. Cause I needed an expert that knew everything about the housewives. And then she dresses up with them, dresses up as them. And I thought like, okay, the photographs will be amazing. They'll be super funny. And, um, and I'll always be the man in it. Like she's pushing in the pool or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. But it was like, it was this, like, we wrote it during the pandemic. It was like, it was super fun, but it was also hellish as well. Like just like, you know, when you get in a cookbook deal, you get like X amount of money. You have to produce that cookbook with this amount of money. Like we looked at photo shoots um, with like different photographers and like food stylists and stuff. And it was like $60,000, $70,000, $80,000. And I'm like, you know, that's nearly all our budget gone. So like you make about five grand each, like yeah. it's no joke. It's like, yeah. you know, I'm making shit tons of money or anything like that. But, um, but the press you get with it, you get yeah. like, you know, you get on a lot of TV it's shows. Press, it's clout. It's more of a marketing tool than it is yes. a revenue generator. Nobody makes exactly. money off of books. And even when you hit like the New York Times bestseller, you're not making any money. You have no. to do a whole PR campaign where you have to hire a PR firm in order to make the New York Times bestseller list. Like you're not making money off it's, books. It, like you have to sell, I'd say like 100, 200,000 copies yeah. and, and you might get a check for like 10 or 20 grand. You know, it's not, it's not crazy. Yeah, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. So that's kind of how it came about. And, you know, we shot it, we wrote it. We had a ton of fun. Me and Amy became great friends through it all. And um, it's done well. Like we've sold like, I think nearly close to 30,000 copies out of the 50 that got produced. So I think we're doing well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I mean, the, like I said, the book's fun. It's on sale now. I have it in my Amazon storefront. So everyone can go and order it. How much involvement did Bravo have in the book? Because it is unauthorized. Yes. Did you have to I go mean, to Bravo we, for approval? Did they try to blacklist you? Was it like, what was the like, situation? I'm trying to think back. We had an attorney at HarperCollins that was like looking at every single title of every recipe. We had some funny titles, but we couldn't use them. Like we did the Sanyarita. Like, there was other like, oh, so like just for example, like like the soapy chicken, right? Like so we had we couldn't be we couldn't be like Adrian soapy chicken. Mm. Like you couldn't say that. You could say then we had to go something like soapy chicken a la Adrian, like. We had to switch it up like that so we wouldn't get sued because it's not her recipe. Right, 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 right. So like just like things like that we have to be super careful with. I don't think we went to Bravo and asked them because we weren't going to step on anybody's toes. Yeah. And then Amy asked Andy then, you know, could he do the forward and so forth? And we went to watch what happens live and he promoted the hell out of it. He was so sweet to us. He was so great. Um, and that was kind of like the biggest push we had on the book, but yeah, people are loving it. They're doing like these housewives parties, but all the recipes in it and they're like tagging me and stuff. It's great. It's really fun. No, they're great. I was making a bunch of recipes over the holidays. I haven't cooked as much lately. I've just been post mating lately, but when I am in a cooking <laughs> mood, I definitely bring out the cookbook. Um, so how is like you and Jeff have kind of had like a, an off and on hot and cold sort of relationship. What, yeah. are, where are you at, guys at right now? Cause I remember we're we were great. I remember last time you guys broke yeah. up, you were like, we're never getting back together. It was a full <laughs> Taylor Swift. Never again. Um, what, what, like, what is it about Jeff that you just can't quit? I just love him so much. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just like super in love with him. And, um, like he's a fun guy and like, he, like pushes my buttons, but I kind of like the excitement and maybe the bit of drama and stuff like a feed off it as well. And um, the two of us kind of like, the two of us are very similar. We're kind of like, you know, we're like hotheads and, you know, and I'll speak my mind, he'll speak his mind. And it's kind of just, you know, it took time to kind of like, to kind of get kind of like on the same track. You know, this is what he means. This is what I mean when I speak. And that's what it is. But the love is there. Like, you know, it's everything else is there. And we're like, we, it's just, it's like, you know, relationships are work. They just yeah. are. And it's like, do you want to do a bit of the work or do you just want to get the fuck out? And, you know, I want to do the work. I love him. And the, that's all I can say about it. How long has it been now? It's been, so Valentine's Day last year was our first day. So it's been over a year now. Yeah. Who made the first move? 
made the first one? I think I did. I did actually. What did you do? I was when I, was when I asked him out. Yeah. We were at like, we were at like, I think like high tops and like Super Bowl Sunday. And, and I was like, well, let's go out. I was like, you know, he, he was, he was broken up from Scott. And so I was just like, let's go out. Let's see what, see if there's anything there. And so we did Valentine's day out of all days. <laughs> I was say he's like, it's Valentine's day. I'm like, fuck it. Who cares? You know, at least, at least we'll always remember that day. Yeah. I'm, tired I'm terrible with dates and birthdays and all that shit. So I was like, okay, this is a good one. Like I always remember this day. Yeah. I mean, and it looks yeah. like it's worked out. Yeah. 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 It is. It's great. We're doing good. How is the co-parenting situation? Like, obviously, you know, he has a kid. Was that something you factored into dating? And like, how have you learned to kind of juggle that? She's great. Like, I love Monroe. I, like, I gave her a tennis racket there yesterday, like tennis ball. So I'm going to like try and show her how to play tennis because I, I was a big tennis guy for like 10, 15 years in Ireland. And um, so she's getting into that. She's fun. Like, she's getting more used to me over time. And, you know, I'm like around more and stuff. We went to see Super Mario Brothers movie last night, which was super fun. Yeah, like just... And she could like, I'm like such a Mario like fan since I was a kid. And like Jeff was like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> like, you know, and then she's kind of leaning into me, like talking about Princess Peach and stuff. So like, it's it's cool. Like, it's really nice that like, I get like to kind of spend time with a kid without having one of my own and kind of experience that because I have nieces and nephews as well. So I'm kind of used to it. But um, do you want? Yeah, it's fun. Like, I don't know. I don't like I always say that, like, it really comes down to money. Like, yeah. you know, I, they're so expensive. And like, I see what Jeff like does with Monroe and like, it's, you know, it's pricey. And like, I don't have that kind of money to bring up a kid and so forth. So um, it's kind of like a TBD. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm pretty happy right now. So life's good. So, life is good. Yeah. As long as life is good, all is good. What, yeah. what was your take on the whole Megan versus Heather McDonald? Oh, God. Um, well, I was there. I was in the middle of it. And um, it just kind of like, you know, everything was fine when I was out there and they were like kind of going back and forth. And it was there was no fighting or anything like that. It was, you know, there was drink involved, obviously. And um, Megan was trying to get her point across and Heather kind of was kind of like, well, do you really mean that? Like, you know, like, do people not like me and so forth? And I'm like, no, she doesn't mean it like that. Just, you know, maybe just include more people like around when you're out and about. So that's what she means. And then I left. They were good. Yeah. And I left and went inside with Kelly. We were making like a cheese board or something like that. And and then Heather came in. She was kind of, she was really upset. And I was kind of comforting her. I'm like, no, I said, don't let it get to you. It's not like, you know, and that was kind of my involvement in it. And I think it just, things kind of got mixed up. Like that I was kind of like, Egg and Megan on against Heather. And I was like, Jesus, no, I wasn't doing that. Like, I do not want to get in the middle of it. And um, so Heather kind of spoke on her on Juicy Scoop the next day or the day or two later. And she's like, no, no, like I was mistaken. Like Stu didn't have any involvement in it because like I was getting dragged. Like big time. It was like I was like the <laughs> instigator of the fight. I was like, Jesus Christ, I didn't do anything, you From know. All the Juicy Scoopers. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. They were like sending back my seasonings. Like, Oh my God. Yeah. That no, like they were so like, I'm not just, you know, I hate your seasonings. I'm not going to buy it anymore. Like I'm sending it back. And I'm like, okay, girl, like send it back. So to set, to set up the scene for people that aren't familiar, Megan, who's on Jeff Lewis live, who's worked with Jeff. She used to be on flipping out. She had some beef with Heather McDonald, who used to be on Chelsea lately, who hosts the juicy scoop podcast. They had it out at Kelly Dodd's house. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kelly I was going Dodd's down there for the tennis. Yeah. yeah, and Megan, I guess from what we've heard, had some feelings about Heather, and she expressed those feelings in a drunken moment, and Heather left very hurt, and, you know, and from what I understand, they're not really friends anymore. I think not, yeah. I don't really know the latest on the whole thing, but yeah, probably not for a while, at least. Have the Juicy Scoopers given you a little bit more grace now? <laughs> they did, so what happened was, this is really funny, so Heather said whatever she said on on Juicy Scoop, like say like, hey, Stu wasn't really like the involvement in it. Like he was actually comforting me and or whatever. And and then all the apologies came in. Like, we're so sorry, Stu. Like we knew you wouldn't be like that. Blah, blah, blah. And then, then I sold out of the seasonings that everybody bought them. It was oh, like, even so better. crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was even better. It was like, you know, Jeff said something funny. He was like, you know, it's really funny. Like everybody's making money off this except Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Megan needs to start funny. selling some merch or something. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. She start putting it, was good. it out there. It, was it wasn't good, but it was, you know, there were some funny parts to it. Yeah. yeah. And Megan's good now? Oh, yeah, she's great. I love Megan. She's yeah. my favorite. And she's my favorite chump out of all of them. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's always from like the first. I mean, remember when Jeff like asked me to go on the show for the very first time? And he's like, "Hey, he's like, who would you like to be?" I'm Megan. Like, he didn't even finish the sentence. Like, I just knew I'll get along with her on the show. She's so great. Yeah, no, Megan is great, and you're good with Heather too. Heather's good. Yeah, like, I haven't texted her in a while. I think kind of after all of that, but yeah, we were fine. Like, we had conversations on the phone. We were good and stuff. Yeah, I saw her in Cabo. We were all good in Cabo. We were all hanging out at Jeff's hotel and, you know, at the pool for the day and everything was fine. Yeah. Yeah. So I know you're a big Bravo fan. Are you keeping up with the scandal of it all and the jersey of it all? Yeah. Um, I This is the first season I watched of Vanderpump. This is the first season really? I watched of Jersey. I kind of watched the, a bit at the beginning, like Teresa throwing the table, all that kind of stuff. Like everybody was into it then for like the first two seasons. And um, and then I kind of took a break because it just was like, it just was too much. You know, I love Beverly Hills. I love OC. I love New York. Um, I have to watch Miami because everybody says it's so good. So I have to like watch the the new, the new version of it. Yeah. I feel like the original version was, was, wasn't bad when I went and rewatched it before season four returned. I didn't dislike it. Um, Are you excited for the new season of Beverly Hills, even though people are saying that it's probably going to be boring? without Lisa Renna. Are you going to miss I don't know. Lisa like, I don't think Lisa Renna carried that whole show. I kind of disagree on that. Like, Denise Richards is going to be back. So that's good. I just don't know what the is drama is going to be. Listen, Denise is a nice, like, she's nice, but I don't think she's a great reality star. I think when she was on the show, she didn't really give us much. Um you know, she tried to censor herself. She tried to have things edited out. Like, I understand her reasoning behind that. But it's also yeah. like, I, when you have a reality star, you want them to give us their life. Like, at least, like as yeah. much as people don't like Erica, Erica's given us her whole life in shambles, yeah. lawsuits, everything upside down. And she's yeah. at least putting it out there. I mean, granted, you know, she needs the paycheck, but I feel like she's giving it to us. Whereas I feel like if Denise was so likable her first season, had she just... Stuck it out. Stuck it out and played the game and was willing yeah. to face Brandy. I think people would have rooted for Denise so hard. And she would have gotten way more OnlyFans tips. <laughs> That's right. I mean, oh God, I just don't like, we don't know. We don't have any information about what's going on there right now when they're shooting, right? We don't know any scandals or any drama or is there? Apparently Denise and Erica have it out. Or Erica says that Denise tried to come and be a little messy this season. She tried to, but Erica says she didn't. She wasn't very successful. Um, mm. And so Denise, I know, has filmed a couple of like cameos, but I don't think she's coming back in a major capacity. Just as a friend, do you think? Uh, I don't even know if it's a friend. I think she's made like three cameos. So okay, she, okay. She may possibly have a recurring role as the season continues on, but I'd TBD. And is there any new people? Did they yeah. add anybody else there's, new to the cast? There is one new friend of, oh my, what's her name? She was just at the Homeless Not Toothless <laughs> charity, That's which so I funny. went to, I went to him. I went to Homeless Not Toothless um, to, to get a consult about veneers and, um, I didn't end up. St- I didn't end up going with him. I went with another cosmetic dentist. But I, I visited the homeless, not toothless <laughs> That's dentist. Just, that office. was just so funny. It was that hilarious. It was. They just had the gala over the weekend, though, and every they all looked great. But the new housewife was there. Apparently, she got into some beef with some of the other women because she's got some some very uh, radical viewpoints that some of the other ladies didn't necessarily agree with. Which oh, wow, will be interesting. okay. Interesting. I mean, Jersey is like giving me life right now since they're in Ireland. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it's just they're going to all the places I used to go to, which was cool. Yeah. Are they, I went on Amy Phillips this week to talk they, about it. Are yeah. they doing Ireland right? Or do you feel like they're doing like the... the no, they are. Mickey? Okay, good. Yeah, they're staying in a castle just outside of Dublin, which is great. And then they're going to like do the nice places. They're going to like traditional bars. Um, They're like... I mean, I can't believe they're just downing Guinness. Like I would do that in college like, uh, because Guinness doesn't have as much like fizz in it. Yeah. So you can kind of slug it down. Like it's kind of smooth. Yeah. So, I mean, like Jennifer Aiden was doing it, like, but she didn't let the pint settle. Mm. You have to let it settle. So it's completely black, like dark, dark black. And then you drink it. It was like kind of still settling while she was like, and she was like, I'm going to get sick. And um, yeah. <laughs> so, there we go. Chef, uh, tips from Chef Stew. What do you think of Dolores's man, her new man? 
I love Paulie. I'm friends with them. I was texting really? him because they had the, I texted him like when, with the day of the reunion when they yeah. were doing the reunion. And I was like, what's going on? He's like, he's like, this is fucking crazy. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait. So I might be going to New York end of May and I want to do an Instagram live with Dolores at Paulie's place. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. 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 I, I'm trying to like get it more like doing like IG lives with the housewives since we did the book and stuff. And um, I was out to dinner with Jeff the other night and ran into Emily and Gina and, um, and Emily's like, come over to my house. Like, come over, let's do an IG live. Gina, come over too. Like we'll get a few of us here. We'll have fun. So maybe we'll go down with Jeff and we'll do that some night. So that will be awesome. They're like really receptive to the book. It's really nice. That's good. Um, w- how do you feel about this Teresa versus Melissa beef with the rumor that she made out with this guy in the back seat that Margaret allegedly revealed to her friend Laura? And now Laura's kind of made a mess of everything. Are you leaning? Do you have a, a side that you're leaning towards in this Teresa versus Melissa beef? Um, I think like, God, what do I think? I, well, Melissa didn't do it, right? Like, I just feel like it was she just- says she didn't do it. Yeah. She said she didn't do it. And Margaret was the one that started. I thought it was the Laura girl that started the rumor. No. So apparently, so the rumor is that Melissa was caught kissing this other guy who's actually really hot. His name's Nick. um, And he's an actor. And so I I believe he's also married, though, or in a a committed relationship. But so they were spotted in the backseat of a car that I believe Margaret's assistant or somebody that works for Margaret Mm. saw them in the backseat right he saw yeah. something go down he told margaret margaret told her friend laura and then laura after she had a falling out with margaret told jennifer and Teresa. gotcha 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 wow see because i've only started watching this season so i don't know all the history of the two like you know with Teresa and melissa going back and forth and stuff like that but i mean i know enough like amy fills me in you know yeah um it's good though it is good it is really like they really bring it every single like episode. Do you think Melissa made out with this dude in the backseat? Do you think she would cheat on Joe? I mean, I kind of could see it. Really? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like Joe was like so like just like aggressive and angry all the time. Mm. And like she's like, I don't know. Like, is he a bit controlling as well over her? Like, I, like. Oof. I know it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I think I hope, I hope she didn't. But I mean, that conversation on the bus, though, when they were having it like, oh, could you like forgive like I- infidelity and stuff like that? And did Melissa answer that question and say like, yeah, I think I could. Or I know a lot of them did. Yeah. Do you think the infidelity is something you can't move past? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It depends on the love. It depends like and everything. It depends if it was like the situation, if it was like really like drunken night, stupid mistake. I don't know. It's really hard. It depends on the situation. Yeah. I think like, I think I would forgive it knowing me. Yeah. I like, I think I would. As long but, as it's not like a Tom Sandoval, Raquel Levis situation where no, it's like, like an affair and it's like go a whole after yourself. Yeah, thing. I'm out. Yeah. I think that's that you too can, much. Yeah, I think you can come back from cheating. It just depends on the situation. Was it mm. a one time thing? Was it emotional? Was it physical? Were you drunk? Yeah. Like what were the situa- what were the circumstances around it? And then I think that can help determine how the situation moves forward. But I don't think a one time affair or a one time hookup or a one time make out like yeah. people are human and people make mistakes. And so I feel like if you're will if both parties are willing to move forward from that mistake, I think it's possible. Um, yeah. I think a bit of therapy, if the love is still there, everything else, the foundation is still there, I think you can work it out. I really yeah. do. Do you think that there's any sort of mending that Melissa and Teresa can make moving forward? <laughs> I don't, I, here's the thing. I think Teresa and Joe are just like terrible communicators with each other. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, if you had asked me, like, I would have like, that would have been no problem. It's like, he shouldn't fucking have to ask you. It's yeah. just like, bring the family, bring everybody. Even if you don't like them, just make peace. It's a wedding. Like everybody, it's just like, it's the unsaid thing. You just do it, you yeah. know? Because if you, it's the one way to start fights within family, not inviting people to a wedding and so forth. Like it's the like guaranteed, you know? Yeah, weddings are just always going to be drama that if you can avoid the drama, like inviting yeah. Melissa, in, like having Melissa in the wedding or having their kids in the wedding, like 
we could have very easily, like, we knew that that was going to be a thing when it was finally revealed that Melissa wasn't like, going to be in the wedding. Like, why would we even that's think why that it's that like, going to be a thing? It's like, Teresa, are you even thinking about this? Like, you're just like, you're just like not thinking. Like, read the room. Like, just make it cool. Apparently, she really goes off at the reunion. I heard she was pretty unhinged. Teresa or Melissa? Teresa. Teresa. I mean, she only went off on the bus and she was about, she was getting up there. Do you think that the show can move forward with both of them or do you think one needs to leave? No, the two of them need to stay. Really? You think, need to, yeah. Do you think yeah. they can stay considering the state of their relationship? Well, I mean, they're probably they're probably not talking right now, are they? Mm-mm. Probably not. No. But it's like, it's, it's what, it, 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 to be selfish, it's like, it's not about them too. It's about like the audience yeah. and what they want. Yeah. And I think like, I think there's always that hope that they want to see them kind of mend in some way and kind of like, I feel like they only need to sit down with a therapist, like a good one. Yeah. I think the only way they're going to mend is by getting off television together because the more they put their family drama on, because think about it, we all have that relative that maybe we don't really love or really get along with, but like we can find a way to tolerate them and be around them. But when you put it on the show and people have opinions and then you have to watch back what people are saying behind your back, like, it's, it adds yeah. a whole other layer that's a lot more challenging. That's so true. I didn't think about that. Up, yeah. And then you have to constantly face the conflict again, right? You have to tape the after show. You have to tape the reunion. You have to do press about the show. So you have to constantly bring up the issue, even if you made up, you know, and you buried the hatchet with that issue six months ago, you still have to talk about it again and again and I, again. And exactly. Again. And you, that's the thing. It's like you've said shit, maybe shit things on the interviews and then you make up and you have to go back and you're like, fuck, I wish I didn't say that like a few weeks ago. And now that's going to come up and that's going to trigger something else again. It's like, and then the producers are totally involved too. They're like, yeah. they're asking those questions to they get those kind of responses. Yeah. 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 It's like, it's like that situation on, on Vanderpump when like Katie was sitting down to dinner and then like all of a sudden, all of a sudden, like, you know, Tom comes, comes over and sits down. And that's when she calls him like a drunk and whatever, you yeah. know, it's like, you know, the producer was like, go in there and sit down. Like, she was just like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, like, what are you doing here? You know, do you want me to shave your armpits? Like, yeah, gross. that was a bit much. Like, <laughs> it's not hard to shave your armpits either. You don't need somebody <laughs> like shaving your back. OK, I get it. People need help shaving their back, shaving your butthole. Fine. But like shaving your <laughs> armpits is not hard to do. It's just like, what's wrong with you? Like, no wonder she never wants to be with you again. Like, it's. You're not making this at all. And he just and he just doesn't have her back at all. At all. It's just really kind of like it's almost like narcissistic in a way. Like it's just really like, I don't know, like oh, I'm tired of your feelings or exhausting. It's like, oh, God forbid, like I'm not talk. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, God forbid your wife has feelings. The person you committed to has feelings or emotions that you don't necessarily for 12 years. Have. Yeah. That's the thing with like, you know, you're together with someone for like so long, and it's just there's such a fine line between love and hate. Yeah. It's just crazy. Because when you really day, think about it, it's crazy. Because at the end of the day, it's fueled by by passion, good passion or bad passion. Yeah. That's what it's fueled by. And so that's why people that love each other learn or eventually come to resent each other if they don't actively do the work to stay in love with each other. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's work. Like, I've definitely, in this relationship, I've definitely, like, grown up a lot being like, okay, this is not just like a walk in the park. Like you've thought other relationships and they didn't work out. So why did they not work out? Okay. Like you got to buck up, do the work, go to a therapist, like yeah, go back to your childhood, like fix things, you know, don't do the same things again. Cause they're not working. So yeah. So I'm like, I'm learning a lot. I'm happier. Like I feel like I'm actually achieving things, which is great. Good. So yeah, there's a lot of good that's come out of this. Are you in therapy? Yeah. You're doing couples therapy too. We did like, we did like months and months ago and stuff that I would go with him and things like that it was good. It was really helpful. We'd talk about things and there was no fighting in it. It was just really kind of like just both of us calm. And then I, cause that's his therapist. So I wanted to find one for myself or my other stuff. And I kind of go to a therapist where like, like, you know, she takes you back to your childhood, like, you know, moments that like kind of upset you and so forth. And then what she does is like, you know, you lie back and then she, she kind of like, not. it's like a really light, like hypnotherapy. And then you go in there and then you kind of think, then she asks you to think back when you reacted like this with somebody, what did that trigger from your childhood? And you can kind of go back there and then she goes in and repairs it. 
like with like affirmations and all that kind of stuff. So it's different. I like it. I really like her. Yeah. She takes you to the root of the issue. Yeah. Yeah. Because the talk therapy thing, like, I feel like I just, I'm, I tune out. Yeah. And I'm not listening. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's just like, because it's just talking and talking and it's just like going here. It's just going over my head. I'm like, oh yeah, I got it. And then like to say things I don't understand. I'm like, shit. I'm like, I need like a kid's book for this. A kid's book. I don't know. Yeah. Kid's therapy. Like yeah. That. Um, okay, so where are you at with the Scandal stuff? Where are you at with Vanderpump? Are you keeping up with it? I'm keeping up. Season? Like, I'm up with it. Like, you know, the Howie Mandel interview. Like, I'm watching it every week. I'm not behind. Do you think the heat against Sandoval and Raquel is too intense? I think when fans get a bit, like, crazy, like, death threats, like... And return like, your oh, spices. And return, <laughs> return my spices. Um, I think it gets to be a lot, like, look... I mean, what they did was like shitty. It really was. And watching it now, knowing that like, I mean, even last week, like Lisa was like, what, why do you have a fucking smile on your face? Yeah. Like she knew straight away. Like, you know, she knew. And I feel like Lala kind of knew as well when she said it, like in Mexico, like, you know, you have a breakdown coming. Like it's whatever she said, something along the lines of that. So um, I feel like there was hints, there was clues. I think Lala said on Jeff's show once as well, like she, she didn't know, but now like thinking about, oh my God, like this and this and this and this, and then we're dancing at the Abbey. And so it's, it's all kind of adding up now. I think as we watch it like week by week, you know, do you think how hard Lala is coming at them? Do you think that's too much? Or do you think it's warm? I don't, I like, I think like, you know, they betrayed them all yeah. by doing this. It's just like, I just you know yeah. i mean i think they all have to be, kind of be in it together it's like there's there's just no excuses like i mean and they're not really apologizing he's not really apologizing that much about it yeah like, he just he's kind of doubling down a bit yeah the howie mandel interview was horrible like he really he's like i tried to break up with her and it's like okay well how did you try to break up with her he's like well i left her little easter eggs you know, and I went to therapy and I thought that therapy would be a great place for me to break up with her. He's like, but then this weird thing happened. She actually started reinvesting in our relationship. It's like, yeah, no fucking shit. When you go to couples therapy, it's yeah. not with the intention of breaking up. It's with the intention of repairing the relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And it's like, unless you're in a clean break, don't do that. Yeah. And it's just like, because it wouldn't be it wouldn't be as bad then. Yeah. Do you believe and then she- like? Do you believe she punched him like he said she did? He said that when oh, he tried to Ariana break up, punched him. He said that when he tried to break up with Ariana, that she punched him, and that's why he was afraid of breaking up with her. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. I don't believe that at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's no like, like, she's, like she's this monster. Like, yeah. no, like, like, could she be upset? Could she be angry? Could she be shouting at him? Yeah, fine, sure. Yeah. But like hitting, no. Yeah, and then there were, like, photos where they're, like, people would dug up, like, photos. Like, look, he has a black eye in this photo. Similar to, you know, how Sheena punched Raquel. Okay, like, this black eye thing, it's just, like, <laughs> do you know how hard it is to give a black eye to someone? Like, yeah. you have to be perfect. You have to, like, you have to, like, have a perfect aim. I've never done fit. it before, yeah, but, but I can imagine, like, like the person's going to move their head. You'll probably get them on the side of the face or the jaw or, like, like to hit smack bang, like, you know, in the eye, like, come on. You have to know how to throw a punch. Exactly. Exactly. And none of oh my these God. people, I think, know how to throw a punch. <laughs> I don't know how to throw a punch. I don't know how to throw I couldn't throw a punch. That's when Sheena's like, I, I can't mean, even close my fist. I was like, yeah, I get it. I mean, I'd try it if it was in a fight or flight kind of mode, you know, yeah. if I was being like, you know, attacked or something like, yeah, maybe. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe she'll go to kickboxing or something. What do you think about Raquel being, she said that she, or I guess the statement that was released to the press was that she was voluntarily checking herself into a facility to address her mental health. It's not a rehab. It's now come out that she's staying at this wellness spa and resort out in Arizona. Was it Miraval? Yeah. Is that the place? And then, and then it didn't. Did Tom go as well? Because wasn't he like doing some ropes or something? And someone was like, it's confirmed. Like they have that rope course at that hotel. I don't know if I don't know if that was Miraval. I know I actually don't think it was because of the he got upset with them because they posted on their Instagram um, a photo and they used the caption. I think these are the best days of our lives, which comes from the Vanderpump Rules theme song. 
Got and it. So he was like, oh, you posting the Vanderpump Rules theme song is basically outing that I was scheduled to go there and you guys are not respecting my privacy by mm, revealing yeah. that I was supposed to go there, which I don't think was the case because Raquel was already there. And by posting that, everybody was talking about Miraval. So I feel like they were just kind of being cheeky and, and you know, were capitalizing off the fact that everybody was talking about them in relation about, to Vanderpump yeah. Rules rather great than marketing. revealing. Yeah, yeah, great marketing. Rather than revealing that Tom Sandoval was there when he clearly was doing Instagram stories elsewhere, you know? Yeah. But so that's where Raquel's staying. She's, do you, my issue is that it made it sound like, the statement made it sound like she was in like some deep intensive therapy program yeah. rather than getting a massage and doing some yoga. Yeah, and going to the pool and probably having a couple of drinks yeah. and just hanging. Like, I mean, come on. They have like a crystal expert. They have a beekeeper if you want to do some, you know, honey milking. I don't Did know. Did the housewives go to one of those resorts? Yeah, before I think a couple. There? I think a couple of them. I think like uh, OC. OC. Um, and I want to say when she one hit her over the head with the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the gong, the Kelly dog. Kelly yeah. hit Shannon. I think that was Mirabal. And I think one other housewife show took a trip out there as well. So it's not the most discreet place to go if you're trying yeah. to address your mental health. Also, why do you need to tell the press that you're addressing your mental health at a resort? She's always doing that. I mean, like before she gets her nails done. That's my issue <laughs> with her. That like people are like, why are you so hard on Raquel? That's misogyny. That's misogyny. And I'm just like, my issue with Raquel is she doesn't shut the fuck up. She keeps issuing statements to the press yeah. about, you know, all this stuff. Like, I'm sorry. I try to reach out to Ariana, but then she like has no remorse. Like, it's just if she would stop talking. Keep, yeah. If she wouldn't keep address releasing exclusive statements to the press. I think it would have died down a bit more and Sandoval probably would have gotten more heat than Raquel, but she doesn't help herself in this situation no. at all. And there's just like, you just, ugh, there's nothing you can say that can make it better. There's just not, you just have no. to kind of wait it out. Thing, yeah. The and best thing it. to do is just wait it out, hide under the covers for a minute, yeah. go home with your family, spend like two months, get off social media and just like ride the wave, you know? Yeah, exactly. Do you think, I remember friend Ronnie asked me this because she's such a Vanderpump fan. She's like, do you think they'll be back on next season? The two of them? I mean, no one's going to want to shoot with them. That's the hard part is it's like, can they really, I mean, I feel like the producers are going to try really hard to get them to come back, but it's like, we saw this happen on the Hills with Spencer and Heidi when there was all, when the cast had a falling out with them because they were the villain couple and then nobody wanted to film with them anymore. And eventually halfway through the season, they just had to let Heidi and Spencer go because there was nowhere for their just, story yeah. to move forward, especially as it related to the other cast. So I would imagine that's what happens. The cameras are probably going to go dead for a while. They're probably not going to film this summer. They're probably going to pick up again in the fall, giving everybody a second to kind of breathe and let the dust. Yeah. Because we have to let the reunion air and we have to let everybody cool off for a few weeks. So I would imagine they'll pick up filming again in the fall and kind of see where everybody's at. Because Ariana has been very clear that she will not film with Tom and she won't film with Raquel. Sheena doesn't seem interested in filming with them. So it's straight. It'll be interesting. But I think they'll probably pick up their story. Tom and Raquel will be like, we're friends and we're figuring it out. But now we're like exploring a relationship. And then they'll probably have to just tie up their storyline with them sailing off into the sunset as one happy couple outside of the group, because I don't think there is anybody that's going to be able to bring them back together. No. The only, just, no. the only one I that's mean, time talking, heals, but like, I just don't think they're going to want to have anything yet to do with them. The only one that's like kind of in the middle of all of this is Schwartz. And I don't think he's strong enough to bridge the group back together. I mean, I think he'll fucking talk to anybody. He doesn't give a shit. He will. But like, <laughs> how is that going to work? Like, he's not going to be able to bring Sandoval and Raquel to no. Lala's birthday. No, exactly. No, he's not. Like, there's Yeah. Whereas Sheena always had that role in the past when there was always somebody that had a falling out with the group. Sheena was always kind of willing to be the bridge to help them come back into the group. And that's how it always worked out on Vanderpump Rules. But now it seems like Sheena's totally checked out, especially after filing the restraining order. I think Sheena is just done with Raquel. And was Sheena not at the reunion? She was on Zoom? No, Sheena was at the reunion. So what they did is they had to tape their segments separately. Got so you, got you. One went off, one came yeah. on. Yeah, okay. Because they nice. had to keep okay. them, they had to keep them a hundred feet apart because of the restraining so order. Crazy. Yeah. It's and fucking insane. 
Yeah, and then th- I think at the reunion is where Raquel tells Andy that she was dropping the restraining order against Sheena. Gotcha. Which, okay. Well, how far? How many episodes are we away from that? So we reunion. only have. So we have this week's episode, and then we have two more episodes before the finale. Oh, not too long. Okay, great. So four episodes in the season total, and then we have the reunion. God, I want to do a watch party for that. Yeah, the reunion's going to be good. The Scandal finale is going to be so good. And apparently, I don't know if this is in the finale finale or the episode right before the finale, but apparently Ariana suspects that Tom is cheating on her and she shares this information with Raquel. And then Raquel says, if he is cheating on you, I'll be there for you. No. Yes. That's fucked up. That's, That's so really, fucked up. It's no, just like don't answer the question. Just be like, hey, I have to take a phone call. Like, just don't answer the question. Just walk away. Find a way to Oof. like pivot out of that, right? Like, how do you? you That's know, really fucking sneaky. That's really it's fucking twisted. Oof. It's not even just sneaky. It, the affair is sneaky. But to lie to her face like that and be like, if he is cheating on you, I'll be there for you. I don't even know if she even realizes like the real effect on her actions and when it's like what do you think is the response then that we all we all see on the trailers that when he's at the fridge he's like hey do you want what do you what what can i get you and she's like i want you to die i think from what i've heard he's he tried to play the victim as like everyone's being mean like i get it you guys all hate me but like i didn't do anything wrong like everybody's cheated at some point like he's kind of just trying to brush it off as like well we didn't have a good relationship like how do you not expect me to cheat on you you weren't having sex with me jesus she wants him to die that's nice i mean listen actually (laughs) (laughs) oh my god it is so twisted the whole the whole thing is just insane to me just it's crazy and then it was like somebody i think like did a rumor i saw and they said that like what like raquel kissed brock or something oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, which was so fucking stupid like yeah. whatever yeah what did you think of last week's episode where she was so like hurt that everybody was thinking of her as a mistress because she decided to go out with oliver i mean look lala did the same thing she slept with like a married guy or whatever. Like, yeah. I just feel like calm down with like the name calling. You know what I mean? They're not all angels, you know? But what do you think of the fact that Raquel was hurt that social media was calling her a mistress because of the Oliver situation, knowing she, that at the same time, she had already began the affair with Sandoval. Oh, so she, was, I mean, she was already, I guess, she was already hooking up with Sandoval. Well, yeah. Well then since that came out. Yeah. Then I guess like, yeah, I mean, I guess she kind of is then it's like, she's taking it to a fucking other level. Like yeah. it's not just like a one night stand. You know what I mean? I think, yeah, I think what my take on her conversation with Lala, where she's like, everyone thinks I'm a mistress and I'm not a mistress and I'm sorry I called you a mistress. I think that was her way of trying to get ahead of the story Mm. and being like, if I can make sure the audience knows that I'm not a mistress, then nobody's going to pick up on the scent that Sandoval and I are having an affair right now. If I can keep all the attention on Oliver and how social media is being so mean to me, then, you know, because then we also have these confessionals of her where she's crying and saying that, you know, Katie and Lala are being such mean girls to her and they're not included her which i also think was strategic in her way of trying to position herself as a victim so that people are focused on katie and lala yeah. being mean to her rather than picking up on the scent that she and sandoval are fooling around are, and like also like with sandoval saying like to schwartz like oh yeah go kiss her like or whatever like she's hot like, like like i feel like that was a total like deflection as well oh, yeah. like to kind of the look week, over here the week before the scandal broke they were at Tom and uh, Schwartz and Raquel were at one of Sandoval's most extras uh, cover band shows. Mm -hmm. And Tom made them come up on stage and kiss in front of the crowd. Oh, wow. Jesus. Right. So yeah, he's really trying to push that story. Really trying to push that, that people wouldn't pay attention to it. So then if they hadn't been found out, then what would have happened? They would have like, I think he would have broken up with her originally I thought he was going to break up with her right before the reunion. And then at the reunion is where he was going to say, say that he and Raquel were now dating, not that they had been dating, but they're now dating. I think his plan was let me break up with Ariana and then make it look like Raquel and I just fell in love shortly after that, rather than making it look like we've been having this affair for seven months. 
Oh, messy. So, so messy. messy. So, so messy. All right, Chef <sighs> Stu, where can people keep up with you? Where can they get your spices? Where can they order your book? Where they, where can they slide into your DMs? Yeah. Give so you can slide hands. into my DMs anytime. It's at Chef Stuart O'Keefe. And you can get my seasonings. I have three seasonings, the original barbecue spicy nice and Greek goddess. And you can find them on Amazon. Just type in Chef Stew seasoning and they'll pop right up. There we go. I'll add them to my storefront too. That way you guys can get them easier. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you coming on yeah, and me dishing too. Finally, with we got me to do this. and taking all my hot questions about your relationship and all <laughs> my hot takes about housewives and Scandaball. Everybody go and order his spices. Get a copy of Cook It, Spill It, Throw It, the not-so-real Housewives parody cookbook. It's on sale now. We've got so many fun recipes and so many so many cute pictures of him and Amy just like living life together. Uh, and what's your Instagram handle again for everybody to follow? Uh, at Chef Stuart O'Keefe. At Chef Stuart O'Keefe. You guys can give me a follow at Just Plain Zach all over the internet or keep up with me at No Filter with Zach for all the latest reality TBT. I do have a show coming up with Lala Ken. I'm in Philly this week with the Brav Bros and Dorinda Medley, uh, April 27th. And I'm with Lala Kent at the Bourbon Room in Hollywood, June 15th. You're coming to that show, right? Yeah, I'm going to come to that show. Okay, I'm here. sweet. All right, here we go. There you go, guys. You can come hang out with us June 15th. Get your tickets now at nofilterlive.com. That's nofilterlive.com. And I will, I'll see you in Philly this Thursday. All right. Love you. Mean it. Bye.